First off, who wants to, to volunteer before I tell you what we're doing? Who's brave enough to know if it's going to be knee slice, shoulder pressure, or something else? You want to? You, all right, good man. <laughs> okay. So, um, so last time I taught, I went over some half guard stuff. And some of you guys were here, but like uh, most of you guys were not here. Okay. And it was in the gi. So I'm going to be covering half guard again today. Okay. And to start, I, I occasionally talk shit about half guard because half guard is like the, the, Main guard that I see people try to play in their gym and then just get absolutely smashed the fuck off in a competition. Okay. And there's a reason why. Okay. I like to think like 99% of half guard players are just complete dog shit. And then the 1% of people make it an extremely effective guard. And then it's, then it's very scary. It's actually one of the more effective guards for Nogi. You know, because we don't have that many options. Nogi, they're good. We just don't, we don't have any good distance attachments. Everything has to be close and squeezy. And half guard's great for that, all right? Now, the, the first thing I'm going to show you is how I differentiate between someone who's good at half guard and someone who's bad at half guard, okay? First thing we're going to work on is our squeeze and how to move him with just our legs, all right? So, I play a traditional half guard mostly. If you ever see me in lockdown, it's because I'm fucking exhausted, all right? So, when I play my half guard, okay, the inside leg, the one that's under his leg, is going to be the one that's going to be biting around on top of his thigh. Okay. Now this bite is going to be the first difference. I'm going to notice if you're good or not. Okay. What I really want to do is I want to get my knee jammed up into his thigh so that when I actually start to close that off. All right. How's that feel? How do you feel about volunteering? Yeah. So you can put a lot of pressure here. Okay. And you're in guards like this. You're not going to be squeezing as hard as you can literally the, the whole time. All right. I do what I call half squeeze the whole time. It's about half my pressure, and I know I can do that pressure without ever having to let it up for the entire time of the match. And then I will do a full squeeze, which is what he got to feel, when I need to move him or if I want him to stop doing fucky things. Okay, so like if he tried to step up and like pull his leg out, he's going to feel the power of these. <laughs> okay, So this is the first part that really matters. And like you can get your half guard in a really terrible way at the start, Okay, however you ended up here, a lot of people don't choose to be here. That's why it's important to know how to play it. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just kind of like, I can do it with my legs closed already, or I can loosen them up a little bit like this, or I can even put my knee in the mat. As long as I'm still pinching here, I'm not really concerned about him just flying out. I don't want to release this pressure yet. Okay, I want to fix this. So all I would do is I would scooch my hips out into him and just kind of let my knee rotate around his thigh. Okay, you're going to have to feel this part completely close off against his thigh before you close your triangle, okay? Now I can move him around with just my legs, all right? Now I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, okay? And then I'll show you why it's important. So this is a drill that I do, when, especially when I'm, I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of nogi and I know half guard is one of the few guards you can play, okay? I go back and I drill this in the mornings, all right? When you're first starting out, like I'm gonna show it with my hands, I'll show it without my hands, but your hands aren't doing a lot of the work. They're just a crutch, they're just there to help guide. Okay, but you guys learn how to use your core and your legs for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, some serious squeeze. Okay, go ahead, just like come down like you're in half guard almost. Okay, and uh, like so I'm just here. I'm just framing almost. I'm not really trying. I'm not trying to worry about underhooks right now. I'm not trying to grab them. I'm just kind of like keeping my elbows on the inside. I'm going to rotate him into the middle. Okay, and the more I can keep that squeeze while I do it, the better. Here. Now the reason I rotate him into the middle is it's going to make it a lot easier for me to lift him up over my head, okay? And now this wouldn't work great if he had underhooks on me, all right? So we're, again, we're just assuming we're here. I rotate him into the middle. Now, my knees are gonna kind of hike up, okay? I'm gonna kind of lift my hips up, and I'm going to move him up, all right? And at the end of this, I'm going to keep the pressure up, all right? This is the first big mistake even decent half guard players do. They're trying to climb down the hips, they're lifting the guy up, and then when they go to do this, they let the pressure up and the guy sinks down again. And now instead of being on the sip, I was higher. And my whole goal, guys, that the big thing we're gonna focus on today is getting lower and lower on the hips. Okay, how to climb down the ladder backwards. And now once I'm here, I keep that pressure for a second. Okay, this is for your conditioning drill. Then I would kind of take them off to the side a little bit. All right. So for your core, okay, it's gonna be here. Up, pressure squeeze, and then off to the side, okay? 
um, if you can't do that motion yet, right, and then you're going to use your hands to assist you, and that's not a big deal, okay? So, like, if I'm just starting out and I don't really have a lot of, like, lower core strength or I'm not comfortable with it, just put your hands kind of under your shoulder. Try to be honest to yourself about how you're doing it, okay? Don't just rely on your upper body. Rotate to the middle, up, over, all right? And then once I get someone off to the side, this is like jumping ahead a little bit, right? Your goal is to keep that squeeze up here. You see how part of it's me pushing him up? Part of it was also me coming down, all right? I want my shoulder at the end of this to be actually touching the outside of his hip. Like as low as I can go. If I, had to, if I could put it up his ass, I would, okay? But I'm going to go here. And then I can come across, and I can underhook on the other side of it. All right? And I can grab his hip bone. I can grab his ass. Okay, Whatever I can get. All right? I recommend the hip bone. No gi because it gives me a little bit of pull here. And a rule in half guard, guys, is you want your whole arm to be on the same plane here. Okay? So it would be bad. Even if my underhook hand was really low, if I was higher up with my shoulder, that plane difference. You see where my bicep is coming up his back a little bit. That's going to make a huge difference when he overhooks me. Starts to put my pressure, put like pressure into my face here. All right, I'm actually going to take that pressure now. Now go back. The reason why being on the same plane is extremely important is because when I'm low and I'm connected, I'm on the same plane. Even if he puts the wizard in, okay, go ahead and put my face on the mat. I'm just not taking the pressure in the same way. All right, so. It's funny because the half guard passer, good half guard passers, have the same exact goal that you do. He should be trying to work himself down my hips in order to isolate my hips, whereas I'm trying to work myself down his hips in order to do good things to him <laughs> for, from my perspective. Okay? So does anyone have any questions about the first thing we're going to do? All right? We're going to work on our squeeze. Okay? We're going to bring them into the middle with their legs. I want you guys to do a couple reps with just your legs or just, just your hands and like a little bit of guidance. Okay. Up over our head. And at the end of that, off to the side. And then once he's off to the side, you need to keep pressure and start to kind of try to sink down his back. Your goal is to get that underhook all the way to his hip bone and your shoulder to the opposite hip bone. Okay. Any questions? Yes. And again, if you can't do this, like if this is not something you're decently good at, you will not be a good half guard player. It just will never happen. Okay. So into the middle, up. You see now, I'm low enough here I could give him a blowjob. Okay. I'm not. I'm not going to. Don't be shy. <laughs> now, listen. listen, honey, I'm not shy. Okay. So now off to the side. Here, now watch my shoulder. Don't don't look at him right now. <laughs> down, down. Okay, this is coming from me crunching my knees up into him. It's personally me pulling him up. But like at this stage of it, mostly it's going to be me kind of crunching myself down into this. Okay, so a lot of it's moving him, and a lot of it's moving me. And then from here, you kind of just win in my head. You get that low on the hips. Uh. It's just going to be a series of attacks until he just fucks up somewhere. So, does that help? All right, guys, grab a partner. Uh, we're walking around trying to help. So, Guys, if you don't feel like you can put your partner's foot to sleep by just squeezing it, you are not doing it right yet. Okay? All right. This is Bird over in the editing department. Andrew somehow managed to unplug his mic for this entire segment. So we're going to play a game of guess what the fuck fuck he's trying to say here and you know let's see how this goes haha -ha, just kidding this is andrew again so uh yeah i did unplug the mic because i'm an idiot so i'm gonna see if i can try to remember what i was saying and explain it to you guys so here i'm kind of reviewing for everyone that really kind of missed the point how important it is for you to actually get your bottom half guard leg as tight as possible before you really commit to going on the offense because if you just don't it's going to be so much harder to do anything. And right there, I was talking about um, the difference between a good underhook and a bad underhook, okay? Like, I will take any underhook I can get. I will take a shitty underhook that's up on his shoulder, and I will run with that, and I will work myself down into a deeper underhook. The thing is, like, underhooks high in the shoulder are very, very bad and vulnerable. 
you'll get darst a lot easier. My offensive stuff, like rolling the guy, is going to be a lot weaker. Um, his overhook pressure is going to be a lot stronger. I can't really wrestle him down on his hips as well. Like, there's just so much stuff going on that you don't really want to be in that high underhook spot. All right, so I work myself down. And here I'm reiterating the importance of using my legs to move the guy, okay, and keeping him lifted up with my leg pressure while I'm trying to work myself down on his hips because a lot of people get, you know, once they get good at moving a guy with their legs, they're happy, they move the guy, and then they occasionally forget to keep that pressure. So when I go to get down on their hips, what'll happen is the guy will also move down at the same time I'm moving down, okay? So then our relative movement stays about the same and I didn't really gain anything. So I need to learn how to keep that pressure and really prevent him from coming backwards while I get lower on his hips. Oh, and uh, yeah, my vocal cords are completely burned out from teaching at the camp and teaching at class and everything, so uh, sorry about that. Actually, it kind of gives me a smooth, sexy voice. Maybe I should do this all the time. Now, right there, I was explaining about how I kind of move my angles, and you can move your whole body around in order to get a better leg clamp. Okay, as long as you can really close off that space behind your knee before you commit to clamping it. And as long as I don't like weaken my half guard enough, the guy can get away. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying here. <laughs> I, have, I completely forget, guys. I have the memory of a goldfish unless it comes to jujitsu techniques and then I'm a goddamn savant, but yikes. It's probably something stupid, though. Look at that fat slob sitting there on the mat trying to show people half guard. Fat rolls getting in the way. I'm getting pathetic. Yeah, go ahead and turn, you fat, re <laughs> fat idiot. <laughs> Don't say the R word, guys. It's a bad word. It's offensive to people. And if it's part of your vernacular, work to beat it out. It slips out occasionally, you know, in context. Uh, just remind yourself, don't say it. Okay. So I'm pretty sure there, what I was talking about was... The concept that we're both trying to climb down the hips, okay? A good half guard passer, they are trying to climb down your hips so they can put as much pressure and isolate your legs as much as possible. So if he has both underhooks and he's working his way down, that is just going to be horrible for your cause, okay? And then you as a good half guard player are trying to work yourself down his hips, which I keep saying over and over. And now I'm getting ready to talk about a way to uh, really kind of help yourself get deeper underhooks on guys that are just too big to move into the middle. Okay, someone that's like 280 for me, I'm gonna have trouble just using my legs and my arms to move them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna dive under and pretend I'm gonna go deep half essentially. And I need to make sure I, I hide my head and he's not able to club it, all right? And now I can kind of pull him into the middle, no matter how big you are, if I can get a good clamp and use my legs, I can kind of pull you into the middle a little bit and get your weight more free floating. And from this free floating position, it's going to be significantly easier for me to start to move you around and start to dig my underhook down. I can make you put your hands on the mat almost every single time. If your hands on the mat, I know you're not kind of posting on me or underhooking me or wizarding me. And then I can start to work my way down your hips from here. Okay, this is a good position to just make your initial attempt to get on the hips. If you can do other ways, it's fine, but this is a good one for bigger guys, okay? There I'm talking about going all the way across to the hip and grabbing the hip bone because that's what's going to give me a lot of my roll and really let me lock my elbow, hand, and shoulder in on the same plane, okay? All right, now I'm talking about from this position. I have my underhook and I could start trying to wrestle up and then switch my feet, but if I do my foot switch here, okay, and I come down low on his ankle and I really kind of hook and turn his knee in from here, his weight and his hips are gonna shift in a way that's gonna make it significantly easier for me to actually come up and wrestle up right away. So it's just a faster way of doing it. You don't always have to do it. Like if you can just come down and get your underhook as deep as you need it and you can just like kind of turn into him, start wrestling up and doing your rolls and everything, that's fine. But it does make my life a lot easier if I learn to hook this early, like while I still have the guy in almost that deep half off the ground, okay? And the lower you hook on his ankle, the more knee rotation I can get. And the more I can kind of feed that foot to the, um, my left leg over the top right there with my right leg and get a good clamp on it, so kind of similar to how I'd get in the leg, the easier all of this is gonna be. Like you'll get much more turn out of his knee. The odds of him actually getting away aren't very high. I do wanna be careful anytime I transition from my left leg to my right leg that I don't just open my legs and give the guy an opportunity to escape. But 
there's a lot of ways to not have to worry about that. Just keeping any kind of pressure, keeping something over the top. It's it's not as big a deal. Pinching your knees in. And now I'm in a great spot. I've got his leg hook, knee turn, my hook's super incredibly low. I'm still under his leg and I still don't really want to get smashed, but um, I can really start going on the offense here. There was a little adjustment. I'm trying to get a little lower on his hips. I do wish that I remembered what exactly I was saying. It was probably dumb though, so. Oh yeah. So a lot of, <laughs> this is funny. A lot of times that I'm looking for people to partner up with or in, in any gym, but you know, even my gym when I'm looking around the room, people try to avoid eye contact. So I have to be like the cobra and the snake. I have to like force the eye contact and then not let them break it long enough that now I have them and I can come over and grab them. So poor Wayne was the first guy that made eye contact with me there. So he's the victim. This is just me showing it again and reiterating the same concepts so that Shane, the person I was using as Yuki originally, can see it himself. Right there, I'm, I'm explaining a uh, safer transition there. Like I'm being cautious. I can bring my, my uh, left leg over into play before I fully unclamp my right leg, okay? It doesn't have to be like I unclamp my right leg and then my left leg comes over. I can bring the left leg over if I feel like I'm gonna lose it. A lot, but I'm not too picky about these transitions a lot of the time because people just aren't good enough to take advantage of timing like that usually. They don't drill. And what that means is you should fucking drill <laughs> is to take advantage of timings like that and become more aware of what's going on because if I'm loose and lazy in any transitions anywhere, that's, that's an opportunity to get away. Shut the fuck up, dude. No one cares what you're saying. Look at them. They look bored. I think I'm asking the questions. Okay, I remember that. Okay, so this guy that's talking, he had a question about why do I keep kind of losing the knee line when I'm doing this? And then I had to go over and kind of help him out. Um, what it was is he was he was pinching a little bit too low on the knee and his pinch wasn't quite correct. Okay, when I went over there and I helped him adjust it to be higher and I really kind of helped him find his angles, he was able to do it correctly. All right. This is the end of Sexy Raspy Andrew. Now you're going to go back to Dumb Miked Up Andrew. <laughs> okay, uh, so this this is a side note real quick, and it's, it's actually a good point that uh, you kind of brought up, the problem you were running into. Okay, it's like, if you're kind of too low on where you clamp, okay, and they have really long legs, it's always going to be a little bit easier for them to free their knee line. Okay, so this is what I consider a luxury in that I don't always get the ability to control whether I'm going to get this better than I get it right now. All right, so if I have to do it on the mat, I have to do it on the mat, depending on what's going on. But if I can ever take my leg when I go to clamp and kind of bring it up higher towards his hip, I'm going to get a lot more control of his hip line. And he's got to go a lot further in order to free his leg. Okay, so instead of clamping, just leaving it lazy, leaving your leg on the ground, if you can ever bring it up as you adjust it and then clamp high like that, now I can really whiplash him. Okay. But you can't always guarantee it, okay? It's worth going for if you feel comfortable and safe enough. And, like, he's not, like, spazzing out, trying to rip out everything like that, okay? You guys ready to learn an actual sleep now? <laughs> okay. Now we're going to learn how to get our sleep prepped. <laughs> I was kidding. You don't get to learn to sleep yet. Um, so first, okay, we have our underhook, and we're low, okay? And, again, low is good. Now, what's going to pretty much always happen here? Okay, is he's going to try to reach back and wizard me here. Okay, and that's going to be the big fight, right? I'm going to give you guys an overarching uh, like vision of where I'm trying to go with half guard in general, right? My goal is to either get up onto my elbow and switch my feet, okay, and like wrestle him down in one of the various ways, okay. My secondary and also primary goal, I'm just going to take whichever they fuck up and give me first, essentially, is to get him to post his hand on the mat. And now I can slip up behind him, so block his tricep, and then I'll get his back, I wrestle him down here. Okay. The third goal is going to be to get a full sweep off of this here. All right. So I can roll the guy without letting him put his hand on the mat. All right. And we're going to go back and forth between all three of those. Okay. 
So I'm going to go into details on all those specifically. But what I mean is, say I'm stuck flat on the mat and I can't get up to wrestle him down, I would go under. And he would post. <laughs> okay. And that's what I'm looking for is weights on his hand now. Right. That means I can start to turn this way and wrestle up on him. All right. I might try to get behind him, depending, but a lot of times they catch the wizard and you don't. But now I was able to get up where I was stuck flat. And your goal is to just get up enough you feel comfortable wrestling. All right. So, like, if I got up to here and felt like I could start coming forward, start looking for knee taps or anything, I'm just going to try to wrestle him down. Okay. That's me. I got all the way up. I'm happy here. If I couldn't get that high up, I go to about here maybe, and then he just started really putting some shoulder pressure down on me. I would go for the roll. He posts his hand. I was able to slip out behind. He catches the wizard. Maybe I get up a little higher. Each one should get you closer to the next one. Okay? Because, uh, like, rolls have more momentum when I do them from higher. They're more effective. Okay? And... The higher I roll, the closer my roll gets to working, and the better I trap his arm when I go for the roll. Go ahead, wizard me. Okay. I'm going to make him post even further out to catch himself. He had to post really wide there. And that gives me more time to get up to a better wrestling position or sit behind him. Okay, so you can see how all of those like play off each other. Okay. So that's what we're going to be working towards, but you couldn't do it without any of the fundamentals, right? So, again, we got our underhook, okay? And I did switch my feet, and I'm nice and low. So like I said, generally the first thing I'm going to do is get overhooked because God damn it, okay? Everyone, <laughs> everyone puts it in, okay? So from here, I'm going to get up on my shoulder a little bit, and I'm still kind of keeping some, some forward pressure with my knee, I'm still trying to crunch myself lower. The thing is, you could get super low and get a good bite low and then be lazy and get peeled up. And that's not good. I'd have to work on going back down again. So that's a pressure you never let up. Half guard is about inches. And when you take them, you can't give them back. Okay. So now I'm up on my shoulder. Um, assuming he even lets me. Say, say, just flatline me. Something like this. Okay. I'm going to hide my head from the club. Reach under his leg, and now I can do this two ways. One is to use my whole leg and core, try to roll him to the other side. Okay, realistically, I'm looking for the post, but if they don't post in time or they post weekly, you just come up with the sweep. Now, let's say I have Ben Pollard on top of me. Okay, I've done this to him. It's not easy, but there's ways to do it. All right. What I'm going to do is not try to roll him yet. Okay, I get him his leg. I keep the clamp here on his knee. And now I'm going to take my right foot and I'm going to put it on the mat. Okay, and my goal now is actually to go we're going to put the wizard in. Okay, I'm just going to start to scooch my hips underneath it halfway. Okay, that was all I had to do to make him post. And obviously at the same time, I am kind of dragging my arm across his back. I am trying to turn him to the other side. But if I only did those, like, I don't get much, okay? So by bringing my hips underneath his center line, now I know he's going to have to post. If he didn't, I'd come up very easily. And when he posts, we try to get up, okay? Get up as far as you can, and then if he wizards you, if you feel like you can wrestle him down, we wrestle him down. Otherwise, we roll him, okay? And I'm going to talk about how to wrestle him down if I have time, and I'm going to talk about the roll, okay? Questions on this? Going from flat on your back to all the way up, as far as we can get. You want to see this on someone? Is that a yes? Yeah. Okay. So I'm already low on his, why am I hooking that one? Low on his hips, okay? And Pixley's just like flatlining me, okay? This is, if anyone's ever been here, <laughs> this is no fun. Well, Pixley might be having fun, okay? So I'm pretty stuck. It, the, the chances of me just getting up on my elbow against Pixley and doing this are very fucking low, okay? So we're going to have to make a post so I can go in. And you don't always have to, like,
so you kind of like avoid this hand ever peeling me up. Okay. Me and his leg, he has pressure. So if I can hide it, I'm a lot better. I said I probably roll him. And you feel the like immediately yeah. your balance is compromised. And once he posts, now we can get up. Okay. I think Being low on his hips. I if you guys or if you guys are ever high, this is why this is another reason why. This is a shitty underhook. If I was here, he actually could darse me if his pressure is good enough and his arms are long enough. Okay? When you're here, it is very, very, very difficult for him to get a tight darse. I bas I'm basically not concerned about it at all. Okay? There is a huge difference. You feel the difference, right? Here, here it will happen. Okay, so don't be here. Like, it's mostly prevention. I don't want to let him lock it up and then try to defend it. Just by having good positioning, I don't want to prevent it. Any other good questions? What about bad questions? <laughs> okay. Go ahead, partners. We're out of time. So I'm only going to show you guys the one sweep. Okay. I'm going to help you guys do the roll sweep. And then if I can, talk to Ethan, let me teach on Wednesday. No gi, I'll do that. Okay. Hello. Come here. It's okay. Don't be scared. <laughs> Okay, so this is all, again, after I'm lowering his hips, I'm happy, okay, he's put the wizard in. If he didn't put the wizard in, I would be actively trying to wrestle up or slide behind him. The wizard, he has to put it in. It's the only thing stopping me from being behind him right now, okay? Now, I'm up with my elbow because I just showed you guys how to get him to post his hands when you were flat already. And when he posts his hands, like, there... I should be able to at least get up on my elbow into this bullfight position or dogfight position. Whatever fucking animal they say it is. Okay? I don't care. <laughs> now, he put the wizard in so I couldn't get behind him. Okay? This is when I can really commit to my role. Okay? And another time I will 100% commit to my role is like if they try to throw me from here, that is an automatic trigger. I don't have anything else to go for. I am now in the air. I might as well try to roll them with it, right? Now, the way to really make these rolls stick, okay? First, you can't guarantee this sweep, all right? Better guys don't put the wizard in as deep because they know if it gets stuck, they're fucked, okay? And better guys feel you start to move their hips, and they reactively post a lot sooner, all right? The ways you can make this more effective, though. First, when I'm on his hip, I'm gonna, he puts the wizard in. I'm actually going to take and pull my chest into his wrist, okay? And I'm pulling my elbow backwards at the same time. So I want to try to pinch and trap his arm, all right? And like I said, better guys don't really give you as much to trap, so it's going to be kind of based on what he really does. If, if I make him just post, that's fine, all right? So I trap this off, okay? Now, I like to go from 0 to 100 on these. So I don't, like, come down and reach and grab anything, I use the momentum of me reaching under and all the way through his thigh or through his uh, shin. I consider both of those valid, okay, to go into the roll. If I stopped at any point there, I would have been flat on my back again with him having the over. Okay. And now what really makes or breaks this sweep, guys, okay, other than the trapping their arm, is learning how to drag them across your back towards your hips. Okay, it looks like a lot of it's coming from the roll, and people like to fixate on the fact that I'm reaching for his legs, like that's the important part. It's not, okay? It's part of it, but it's not what makes it work, work or not work. What makes it work or not work is this low connection on the hips, okay? Just, I'm just going to pull you, okay? Dragging him across my back with the rolling momentum, okay? So without a partner, it looks like I'm doing this. And because I had my elbow collapsed, a lot of it's coming from my core on the roll, but I am taking my arm and actually trying to pull him until he rotates all the way over. Okay? So, if I'm up here and there's too much pressure for me to keep coming up to the bullfight, dog fight, cat fight, whatever. I'm going to call it cat fight. Is that okay? Dog fight. Cat fight. <laughs> so here, okay, I collapse his on this, okay, I don't let him pull his hand out. I trap his wrist as best I can. Okay, I go from zero to 100 
diving under and trying to roll him with the momentum, and I drag him across my back. Here. Now, if you had reached under his legs, you have control of this when you come up, which is good. Because now I can be here. Okay. As long as you get the sweep, I'm happy. If I really messed everything up, you got me in half guard, I'm still pretty happy. Okay. But I don't really want to be in half guard. So once I come up off the sweep, especially if I'm under this, I'm going to make sure that I keep this knee turned in or straight here. I'm never going to let it turn back into me because then you can drag it back out into like a butterfly hook or something. So try to turn your knee into me. I'm going to be doing a lot of knee pinching and using this outside knee to kind of rotate this to the inside again. All right. If this is going above your heads, guys, I really want you to focus more on the half guard part for the guys that feel comfortable. Okay, here. Um, if he's really, really turning back in me, I'll, I'll walk the line here and get him turned to the other side. Now I can winch a wiper. And now I'm in side control. I try to avoid back steps here because if I don't have good control of his knee line, when I back step, I might lose my pressure. And that foot comes up and hooks a butterfly hook. And this can get weird. Okay. You might not get knocked over, but you also might not get knocked. You might get knocked over. So I don't ever risk it. Anytime you can replace a big back step with just a windshield wiper, always do that. Okay. High level jujitsu is about margins and that's a margin that might matter on a good guy. So one more time with someone else so you can see. So I'm here, rolling his hips, I'm up, pinching the hand as best I can, pulling him into me, trapping this off, using my chest if I can't pinch more to push into his hand, trap it between us, drag him across my back, big roll. Here, and don't get lazy. Now that I'm here, I can start to walk and winch wrapper my legs out, okay? Now he shouldn't be able to go anywhere. I have him. I don't need to stay under his leg anymore, but like, I'm not gonna let him just sit up and run away. I can start coming up with side control. Okay, last chance for questions. All right, grab your partners. So I'm gonna set a clock. You guys, I want to get you guys rolling. But guys, this is a uh, this is just half guard fundamentals. Half guard is a rabbit hole that goes much, much fucking deeper than this. Okay. But again, like I said at the start, if you can't do any of the beginning stuff, then like further down. So the reason this doesn't work really well in tournaments for a lot of people is they learn it really not well. Okay, not a lot of people are aware of the details that really make it work. And then when they're practicing in class with their teammates, they are, they're used to being able to really easily get in the half guard, climb down the hips without, without a lot of resistance and pressure. And it's like they're getting all these inches for free, and they're not used to really fighting to keep it and keeping crunched up in the pressure and bumping the guy the whole time. And in a half guard, they take those inches, or in, in a tournament, they take those inches back. Okay? So if you want to be a half guard player, you have to learn to fucking squeeze the guy and deal with that and really keep the pressure the whole time, even on guys that, you might not necessarily need to, because in a tournament, you'll need to. Okay, half guard is also, honestly, a half guard player with a deep underhook on me is one of the scariest things in jiu-jitsu. I'm probably going to get swept. There's ways to try not to get swept, but you are in a bad position. Okay, so guys, grab some water. I'm going to set a clock, and then you guys can beat the shit out of each other. Bye, have a great time.